All right, so this is a story about a real haunting that happened in Jonesboro, Tennessee with me and my wife. Now, my wife will always say that I'm crazy about stories and hauntings, and I do love that stuff, but she'll say this one was real. Something happened here. Something was in our house, and I'll tell you the story about it. You know, Jonesboro is the oldest town in Tennessee, and there's a lot of haunted places and cool places around there. You know, these old Andrew Jackson stayed there at the Christopher Taylor house, and Eureka Inn and Chester Inn Museum there in Salt House, Widow Brown's, and the old Parson Church, which I think now has become a whisk a distillery. A lot of cool places around there, a lot of old places around there, and the other people that have lived in other houses down there have had the similar same experience. So, let's get on with the story. Okay, I don't know if I was actually talking in video and at the same time, but going back to the original story, Jonesboro is the oldest town in Tennessee. Therefore, it's odd known that it's the most haunted because it's the oldest. You can spend a whole day down here. I'm not really going to do that. I'm specifically going to go to a house right over here because this is an, there's an actual house that me, my wife, and a little dog we had lived down here just to give a little perspective old place down here because they've added a lot of stuff since I was we actually lived down here in this building for two years not really a big ghost believer maybe one will make me a believer here someday but this house that I'm fixing to go to was actually and it's the yellow one actually up there it used to be white I think I've got some pictures of it But uh, we stayed there for two years and uh, rented it. It's actually a log cabin. Now, the reason how I know that is because down in the back porch here, there's a little trap door and you go underneath and there's a dugout. That dugout underneath it, you can see the bottom of the floor joists, which are all big logs. So it was a log cabin. It's that house right there. You know, all these are considered old, but that's the one that we stayed in right there. And it looks like they had a well in the middle of it. There's a big hole, concrete hole in the middle around the kitchen. The other thing we had problems with is the train comes through here and you're right next to it so when they blow the whistle because there's a, used to be a road that came all the way through there now they've shut it off but uh, back then it was uh you could drive through it and that train would blow that whistle and you'd end up on top of the ceiling pretty much but up there with that window on the right hand side the top up there is where if there was any haunting it's where this is where it happened again i don't believe Here's the old railroad tracks. And there were some people that lived in this building that actually told us the story that in this building there was there's a underground railroad for slavery was happening in this town and they used to keep people down in that little cellar what i call a cellar root cellar and then they would ship them onto the plane or plane chute ship them onto the train here i didn't know that that was a story well, look at that that's pretty cool there's also horses that come through here but that's the story getting back to it and it looks like to me that these people or whoever here they've actually tree's gone that's kind of the kitchen area and that's the living room right there and the shed is part of 
property there. There's one of the trees left, but, but right up there is the where there's no shades down. That's the actual room that's happened. So before we continue, or I continue to tell you about what actually happened that night, I'll tell you a little bit more about what things did or happened before this. So we'd moved in this house, and it was old. And I told my wife, hey, it's old, it's going to be creaky. Yeah, you'll think you'll see stuff. And she says, oh, man, I'm seeing shadows and stuff around there. There's got to be something here. And I said, no, I don't really believe that. But as I came home one day, I had I used to be a winemaker and I had been making wine for a long time so I knew what I was a little bit of what I was doing and I had these wine bottles all up on this shelf and every one of them was blown out. The cork had busted and they all poured out. I thought, well, okay, maybe that was me. I forgot to let the fermentation finish so it wouldn't come into champagne, you know, bottles and stuff like that. And I said, well, I, that'd probably be me, but I had other bottles in there that weren't the same age so that was really freaky and then my wife said well I come home and all this stuff in the kitchen has been moved around I said well I didn't do it I have not been here and she you know little things like that and so we had you know a lot of little things happening around the house like that which were really creepy and then you know we had this incident happen which convinced us something was going on so let's continue on So anyway, as we were sleeping, about two o'clock in the morning, we heard that door, that old skeleton key door, just rattling shh, 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 back and forth. And so it wouldn't be that's the room right there. It'd be this room right over here where you can see the rocking chair. That's it right there. So and. Uh, we thought for sure that somebody had actually broken the house, and that's really what we thought at first. They got a screen porch in there. They didn't have that when we were here. So the first thing I did was jump up and grab a beaver stick I had. I was getting ready to hit somebody. My wife jumped out of bed. My dog started scratching the door. We knew somebody's in the house. And that door just kept rattling back and forth, back and forth, like that. And I thought, God, what is that? So finally, it stopped. Here comes the car. And uh, when it stopped, we opened the door with caution and looked. My dog took off running, but there was nothing in the house. And as you can see, these old windows were the same. They were like shut. You can't get those windows open. So nobody could crawl out of that window and the doors are like they are. So nobody really could have been in the house. That's what we really thought. But we don't really know what happened. But I can just tell you right now, that's the scariest thing that ever happened to me in this house right here or any house. And it's a fact, because I mean, something did try to open our door I don't know what it was, but you know, the doors were all locked and as you can see, it'd be hard to get out of here unless you knew a secret way. I wouldn't doubt that could be happening, but I don't think there was anybody in there. But that's it right there. That's a story untold on the network, my friends. And that house has definitely got something going on in it, I'll tell you that. But we had a great time, we enjoyed it. We lived there for two years and I got transferred back out of town. So we had to leave. The guy actually wanted to try to sell me the house because we rent it, but you gotta be careful with that in the historical town because you had, you know, you gotta keep them all historically uh, built and things of that nature, but that's cool. That is a haunted bridge. I mean, haunted shit. 
haunted house right there if I ever saw one. I mean, that is a haunted house if I ever saw one. Because I lived in it to tell the story. Okay, now that we did the ghost walk, I'm going to go right by here one more time and take a look at the house that we lived on, which is the yellow one right here. This is the road we lived on for two years. Coolest place ever, I, even with the ghost. But there she is right there. But definitely something happened in that corner, upper top left room up there. Something jiggled that door and I was trying to get out of Was it a ghost? Was it a person? I don't know. It was something. And that actually happened. Goodbye, ghost. You stay there now. These are really old houses. I mean, it's a place. Like, oh, I always got to have somebody on my... Get that, you know? I'm going to take my time. You can just wait. You got a problem? This is old Widow Brown's right here. Parson table, which was an old church, converted, really good place to eat. I don't know what's there now. Um, it's haunted looking, it's crack. I mean, it's all these houses are. All right, if you're gonna continue on my butt, I'm gonna slam on my brakes, buddy, whoever you are. And they are. It's supposed to be going 10 miles an hour down through here. Slam on my brakes. So anyway, here's the salt house. It's always a great place to visit right there. And they got the story there. Now that's really cool. Kind of go through the place again. I think I didn't video it earlier. I missed, messed up. I guess that ghost must have hit the button and said, don't you do that. It's some lady trying to ride my rear end back here. But anyway, I'm gonna go this way and hopefully she'll go the other. Turn a little air on here, folks. Pretty warm out there today. Uh, a lot of good places to eat down here. Lollipop shop's been around there for a long time. That's kind of a candy shop. If you got a sweet tooth, I guarantee you can get it filled there or get a cavity one. Here it comes, looks like somebody's got a sweet tooth. Thank God that lady went on another direction. And then you have all these other places down in here and the shops and, I mean, it's just a cool little place to visit Jonesboro. I really like living down here. I miss it. Brings back good old memories. Good old memories. I like that. We like good. There's little antique shops down here and just all kinds of stuff. But it's really cool. I'll go on down through here and kind of see the old houses and then we need to go to the place that my main objective today, which all these other objectives were really wonderful actually. I mean, anytime I can have an adventure and stop smell the rosies, that's a good day. Because that's the way I'm going to try to do the rest of my life instead of rushing up and not doing the things I probably should have been doing in my life. But I'm not going to live forever. And this car looks like I ain't going to stop there, buddy. Their stop sign says STOP. Did you understand that? Oh, he's got snake lights on his car, so I guess he's cool. Anyway, here's the older neighborhood. And then we're going to junction it right out of here, out of here. Turn that air back on, man. See you later.